Hello, this is Wes Newman with Autodesk. I'm here to talk about some of the new features found in Civil 3D 2016 Pro Pack 3. With this release, we've added two new tools, the Traverse Editor and Traverse Adjustments, that both work together. In this video, I'm just going to be talking about the Traverse Editor. There will be a separate video for the Traverse Adjustment. So when you install Pro Pack 3, it will add a new folder to the toolbox uh, with the Traverse Editor and Traverse Adjustment in there. Um, so to launch the Traverse Editor, simply double click on the icon and you'll notice that it will load the Traverse Editor there at the bottom of the graphics view. This tool looks very similar to the uh, tool that came out in Pro Pack 1. It is built off of it and extends that functionality quite a bit. Um, so I'm just going to uh, quickly run through some of the options and then show you how to uh, use the tool. Um, so at the top here you can you can see we've got kind of your standard uh, new, open, and then save and save as. Uh, in between that we also have a load from entity. So if you have a polyline out there and you want to load that up into the Traverse Editor you can do that. Um, the next button there um, over is the load balance tool and so what this will do is prompt you to save your current traverse and then load that in the traverse adjustment and dismiss the editor. Uh, the next uh, option is the creation. Um, so how do you want to create the objects? Do you want to do points and lines, just points, or just lines? And so Many times I like to just do lines. Um, you may not always want points at every single um, endpoint. Uh, the next option is how you want to control the zooming. Um, the zoom extents, what it does is it controls your zoom factor and makes sure that it uh, fits the whole traverse into the graphics view. You also have current row and then uh, no zoom at all so that won't move your view. Um, the next option controls the actual look of the tool. Um, notice here we've got lines and arcs, so if you just want to do lines, you can switch to that and it removes all of the arc information there, a little cleaner to look at. Uh, the final one is actually a settings. Um, one of them is about the transient labels, scaling them, uh, direction, we've got a decimal DMS versus just decimal, some conflict resolution, then if you want to erase data uh, in certain situations, so uh, like when you close the dialog or start a new one, you want to erase all the previous data, um, there's options to do that. Okay, so let's actually talk about the tool now. Um, notice uh, you always get the initial row um, that's a point side, and what you want to do is you want to enter in your starting location. You can do that in many different ways. Uh, you can key in a point number, you can key in a coordinate, uh, you can actually select in the graphics. In this case, I'm going to key in a, a point number, uh, and as soon as I do that, um, I get another uh, row, which is a, it defaults to line. Notice we also have an angle up here in this initial row. That is so you can set an initial back sight. The case in which you would want to do that is if you're going to turn an angle with your very next line. Okay, So if you wanted to turn right an angle or turn left from an initial back sight, you could do that. Uh, it's not needed, um, but it is available there. Now moving on to creating a line, um, notice here we've got a little um, button to drop down to graphics. Uh, we can use this, we can key in the angle, key in the distance. There's many different uh, ways to key in angles and distances. I would encourage you to take a look at the help documentation. Notice uh, if I scroll down here, it kind of spells out the different ways to enter in directions, um, quadrants. Uh, you can do uh, an azimuth. You can do a bearing. Uh, you can enter in the bearings with the dot dot method. Um, you can uh, enter decimal degrees uh, different ways, degrees, minutes, seconds with spaces or decimals. There's there's several different ways to do it. And you can also uh, specify directions and distance in between points with the triple dot method. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for this first line, I'm just going to use the graphics view and show you one option that's available. 
notice what I did there I just simply picked another point and it uh, filled in the distance and uh, angle for me um, of course I can go back and specify a new distance if I want to uh, it's still going to keep the same angle and then of course we get another line available there to us and so um, let's say we want to turn an angle from um, this previous one so if we want to do right 90 so if we turn a, a, a right angle and then we'll just do uh, 200 for our distance there and notice what happens uh, it turns a 90 degree angle we get the transient graphics uh, for the for the turned angle and it also calcs the the angle that it's using um, notice the precision that it's utilizing there in the graphics uh, and in the dialogue uh, it's going to be running off of your ambient settings and that is important to notice because um, it's not using the full precision of Civil 3D it is truncating the information off at your ambient settings precision and that is because uh, many times when you enter in deeds um, of course you're entering them off of uh, paper and uh, you want to utilize the precision that's on that paper especially if you're checking it with hand calcs um, that way there is no misunderstanding of how the rounding takes place and your residual errors okay so we'll go ahead and um, in this instance uh, let's let's create a line and a distance from two points here notice here I've got um, a point two and a point three um, so I'm just gonna do uh, the dot dot uh, triple dot method so two dot 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 three and then I'm gonna do the same thing two dot 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 three and notice what happens there um, it uses the information from two to three for both the angle and distance um, this is a live connection here so for instance here if I go and pick up point three and I move it something like that um, notice what happened there it automatically uh, moved my line for me so let's now create an arc. Uh, we've got two different methods of creating arcs. We've got chords and, and radials. Um, so if we go through here and create a chord arc, you essentially you need to give it an angle and a distance. So again, I'm just going to use the, um, the graphics picker to make it simple. And then we've got three different options um, to calculate the rest of the information. Um, so you just need to fill in one of these. So for instance, if I wanted to use, uh, let's do a 250 foot radius. And notice what happens. All the calculated values are italicized for you so that you know which one was input. Okay, so all calculated values are italicized. If I go through here and let's say, for instance, um, key in an actual length here. So if I do 120 for the length, um, notice what happens. The radius actually gets italicized and backed in. Um, if we want to convert this to a, a radial arc, we can do that. If we want to make this tangent or make a tangent arc um, from our uh, previous line, uh, let me show you how to do that. What you would want to do is actually turn an angle here. So in this instance, we do a R90 for our angle. And then um, notice what happens there. It turns 90 to the radius point. If we want to go tangent from the, from the exit, uh, we'd go to the, our, our line and we do another 90 and then we can uh, do a distance here and let's, uh, let's do something like 75 just take a look and see what that looks like so now that we've created a traverse uh, we're actually ready to take it to the adjustments and look at our closure error and apply one of the adjustment routines but we'll be handling that in the next video I want to thank you for watching this demonstration on the Traverse Editor found in Civil 3D 2016 Pro Pack 3.